Okay, what's good, everybody? I'm here with my friend Yambasu. What's going on, everyone? How y'all doing? And this is a new type of video I'm doing today. Today, I'm doing a video of something that should be done, especially in this day and time, going on with, you know, with everything going on in the world and society and just, you know, beliefs and everything. You know, it's a video I wanted to do because I feel like this is the pow most powerful way to not only really evangelize, but get the message out to thousands. You know, opposed to, you know, just, you know, one one, one speaking. Because, you know, I wanted to use my platform, something that I'm good at, something I'm called to do to really get the message across. Gotcha. So, you know, today I'm going to be asking you a series of questions. Uh, and I'm going to be speaking to you from, like, the mindset of people like atheists and uh, people of other other religion, okay. uh, Christians who kind of stand in the middle, who don't really know how to feel about things. Yeah. And just people who are, I guess you would call like lost Christians who, you know, who are believers, but they're just, uh, you know, stuck in their own ways. Is gotcha, that cool? Gotcha. Yeah, that's perfect. Awesome, awesome. So the first question I'm gonna ask you today is, who is God? Hmm. Who is God to me? Well, who is God in general? And, 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 and who is God to me? Okay, because uh, I always like to personalize things. I think that everyone who encounters or should, who wants to have a relationship with Christ should, you know, make things personal to yourself. So to me, Christ is, or sorry, God is a father, he's a friend, he's a redeemer, he's a comforter, um, he's my savior, he's my everything, yeah, my everything. Awesome, so like, for a person who doesn't know anything at all, mm -hmm. like, you know, like, you're talking to me, I'm an atheist in this, in this scenario, okay. and I just don't even know who God is. We say, oh my God, God this, God that, yeah. but who is God? Like, I'm lost. I mean, God is the creator. And I think that at the end of the day, when we talk about, you know, what a God, God is or who he is or what he does, it stems from your belief. So if you can believe that, you know, you and yourself, you didn't get here by, you know, accident or evolution or by happenstance, that everything in this universe was created by an all powerful being. That's who God is. But even at that as large as God can be, God can also be something personal to you or personal to me as a father or a friend. So that's where, you know, the comparison comes in, where it's like God is the creator. He's the alpha. He's the omega. But he's also a father. He's also a friend. OK, OK, OK. So who's this Jesus guy then? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Jesus is the physical manifestation of God on this planet. So Jesus mm. is also the son of God. And that's what he's saying. It's like a beautiful thing. So. You know, God in flesh is Jesus Christ. Really? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, that makes. All right, I'm starting. To, I'm starting to get something with this. Okay. All right. So, um, so why are they so important anyway? Like, why should I care? No. I, I see why you care, but why should I care? No, it's true. I mean, for me, at one point in time, I wasn't a believer. I didn't believe in anything, mm -hmm. and it's to understand right. that to to give your life purpose or meaning, or to understand where you come from, understand that you're not alone. To understand mm -hmm. that there's someone who loves you regardless of wherever you're at the importance of understanding who god and who jesus christ is and what they want for you in your life that they don't want you lost mm -hmm. that they don't want you sad they don't want you depressed they don't want you out here sinning knowing that and understanding that even if you feel alone even if you feel like your parents aren't there for you you have no friends you always have god and you always have jesus christ and they're always there you just have to choose to accept it. Wow, wow, wow. That's that's really important. That's really important. So, this is cool and all, but is God even real? Like, how is he real? And, you know, that's what I mentioned earlier about knowing for yourself. That's where it comes into importance. Because I can sit here and tell you about the encounters or the experiences or the ways that I've trusted God and he's shown himself faithful in my life. But until you can realize that for yourself, until you ask and seek for yourself, you won't know. So I suggest why well, I, I would just call you, any individual, any person, mm. if you want to know if God is real, you know, ask. Seek and you shall find, the scripture says. You know, ask, pray to God. Ask him to reveal himself in some way. Ask him to reveal himself in a way that's personal to you. Therefore, it's not about my faith or his faith or your faith. It's about, sorry, it's about your personal faith, a personal encounter that you have. 
because you can't use someone else's faith. Mm. Uh, uh, question, Miss Young Basu. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Where is hell? I, I hear some. I hear it's just some hot place that only bad people go to and everything. And it, I mean, it doesn't really sound that scary to me. I mean, we. I joke about it with my friends. Yeah. Oh, don't laugh at that. You're going to hell. Yeah. Well, like, like, what is hell? Why, why should I care about hell? I think that um, you know, as of recently, just through, whether it's the media or society in itself, we've just gotten to a place where we trivialize hell or we we make it very casual when we speak about hell. But hell is not for a weekend. You know, my father and the Lord always always reminds us of that because the wages of sin is, is death. Mm -hmm. And, you know, sin is one way to guarantee you a one-way ticket to hell, right? And to understand that this is not a joke, it's not a game. You only have one life to live in the flesh. How you live your life in the flesh dictates whether you go to heaven or whether you go to hell, but also about your relationship with Christ. And if you don't understand that hell is a very real place that is forever and it's not a pleasant place it's not like a resort it's not like a hotel you know what i'm saying hell is very real it's a lake of fire it's not fun it's weeping and gnashing of the teeth it's not a pleasant place to go to and you know when you understand that it's not to scare you to, to live your life correctly or live on the straight and narrow more so it's just to understand that the actions that you take have consequences and we're not perfect no one on this planet is perfect but when you understand that you will make mistakes but if you ask jesus christ for mercy if you ask for repentance there is mercy and there is grace in christ mm. so like so like say i'm in hell right and you know i'm on fire and everything does my body just get used to the fire like i just build pain tolerance for it like you won't be in hell. You'll never be in hell in Jesus' name. But I get your question, yeah. No. Hypothetically. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. But no, I mean, it, it's not something that you're just going to, like, one day get used to or, you know what I'm saying, like, you'll become flame retardant or there's a fire extinguisher. You know, it's, it's everlasting torture and pain and anguish. It's not something to be trivialized or to joke about. Wow. So, yeah. Oh, so, so this whole time... You know, I've been thinking, oh, oh, hell, I'll get, I'll get used to it. hell, ha ha. But oh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually be burning, burning, like consistently, like, like the pain repeats. Yeah. I don't think anybody wanna go there. It's a quite literal lake of fire. Yeah, it's, it's not a joke. It's not a game. Yeah, the same Marvel. It's the, it's the real deal. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, so what is heaven, and why does everybody want to go to heaven? Well, I mean, I always, and I refer back to, you know having a personal relationship, but even me, myself, I like to contextualize things for myself for, so I can understand. You know, I imagine heaven as, you know, just a place where I can forever be with my Lord and Savior. And just, it's a great place where, you know, there's no more wanting of things. There's no more, you know, pain or suffering or anything of that nature. And it comes when you have a relationship with Christ and you do your best to honor that relationship, you know. The scriptures that go into more detail to be descriptive of heaven and you know what it would actually look like and what things you would experience but i always like to you know like i said personalize things for myself and just understand that it's like the good things and the pleasurable things that you want in life is there for you waiting in heaven it's more so about if you're able to live your life to be able to to meet up to the standard mm. wow okay i mean that sounds fun to me i mean so what what should I be expecting for having that? Like 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 what what's really up there for me? I mean, an everlasting time with you know the Creator and Father. You know every good thing that you will want. There's no wanting in it, but it's funny. It's like every good thing that you will want, but you won't want anything. You won't lack anything. You know heaven is is that embodiment, and um, you know I think that. It's something that we should all strive to attain, you know, entrance into heaven. You know, my father and the Lord always says, Dr. Ty Emanuel, it's like, you know, you don't, you don't get into heaven by mistake. You know, mm. you know that you're wow. going to go to heaven. You don't just get there, like, by happenstance, you're going to wake up and like, oh, wow, I just so happen to live my life that way? No. Oh, the things okay. that you do, you be intentional about, and that's how you make it. Wow, okay. Because I don't hope much people, you know, I just... I used to think, oh, if I just live my life right, I, I do good. Uh, you know, I help the old lady across the street. I give yeah. my teacher an apple. Yeah. Um, 
Um, I, I leave a like and a comment on everybody's <laughs> YouTube post. Yeah, I'll go to heaven because I'm just a good guy. So you know, so you, you post that amen when they say say amen under this thing, and you know you'll get to heaven stuff like that. So you mean to tell me that you know I have to accept Christ as my Lord and Savior for me to get there? Yes, I can't sir. just think I'm a good guy and die and wake up thinking I'm being heaven because I was a good guy morally. Yeah, and you know, I think that it's a device of the enemy to really trick people to really believe that it's more so about do's and don'ts than it is about a relationship with Christ. I'll sit here and tell you right now, I'm not a perfect person. You know, there's things mm. that I've done that, you know, would technically disqualify me if not for the mercy and the blood of Jesus Christ, which cleanses us of all sin and iniquity. Uh -huh. So what we have to understand is this, that if you think that you're going to make it to heaven because you checked off boxes on a to-do list i didn't sin i didn't lie i didn't cheat i didn't do all these things i kept all the old mosaic laws you're missing you know that's where you that relationship is lacking you have to understand the scripture says you know if i confess with my heart that you know if i confess with my mouth that jesus christ is my lord and savior and i believe in my heart that you know god rose him from the dead that's how you accept christ and that's one way your beginning step to making your way to heaven. It's less about do's and don'ts, but your relationship with God. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's that's interesting and all, but I mean, why do I have to go to church as a Christian? Like, I don't really understand what's going on or why everybody acts the way they act with the whole praise and the worshiping and speaking in tongues and all the crying and shouting. Why 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 I want to go to church? Well, I and once again, like. There's a lot of scriptures that tell you, like, you know, scripture talks about not neglecting the assembly of the saints, but, you know, I always like to liken it into, like, modern day times or the modern context. If you wanted to achieve a degree, if you're in school to be a theater major, or if you're in school to be a business major, there's a difference between online and going in person. Mm, okay. You know, there's a difference between being in the class, being around like-minded individuals, iron sharpening iron, being able to ask your questions and getting them answered in real time versus not. If you say that you want to achieve something that you've never done before, you're just going to surround yourself by people who are also doing the same thing. You're going to find yourself someone who's more advanced than you are in that subject or in that area to help guide you because they've achieved a certain level of something that you want to achieve as well. But like in church onto the same thing, you know, I know that every time that I enter the church building that when I surround myself with my brothers and sisters in Christ, when I'm, you know, when I listen to a word from my father and the Lord from, you know, one of the pastors at church, I'm hearing a word that's not only encouraging me, but it's also uplifting me and just advancing my relationship with Christ. Of course, you have to do your own due diligence and you have to put in your own work. You have to develop, you have to put in the time to develop your relationship, but to understand that, you know, your time in church is important because you can't say that you want to achieve something, but you have no direction and you have no sense. You're not relying on people to check you, you know, to, to, to validate some of the understandings or recalibrate you when you get a little bit off course. So, you know, church is important. Fellowship is important. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm a new person. I, I'm new to going to church. Mm -hmm. um, this is my first time going, but I still don't really get what well, all the praise and worship and running around, crying, shouting, speaking in tongues. I don't, I don't get that. It, it comes off as, as strange to me. Why is that? I mean, you have to understand it's like if you're doing something for the first time or if you're if you're around an environment for the first thing and you're experiencing things, things may seem a little different. You know, some people may be coming from different types of church backgrounds, and I don't want to get too deep into different, you know, um, different theologies and things of that nature. But I know for me, in my experience with Christ, things were a little, you know, strange, if you will, because I lacked understanding. You know, when people are crying or worshiping God, you know, to understand that God, his, the praise is the only thing that we could give God that's of value and worshiping him not only just in, in song or in dance but also in our lifestyles and how we live is what god takes from us there's not a single thing not your watch not your phone or anything that you can give god that he can truly use because god gives us everything right. but how we use our lives to worship and praise him is one way also in terms of like speaking in tongues for example 
you know, some people may come in and not have an understanding of what it means, but to know that it's a gift that happens when the presence of the Holy Ghost is there. So with more understanding, when you read scriptures, when you ask questions, you can learn these things. And it's not necessarily to say that tomorrow you're going to be a tongue speaking, you know, worship and praiser. But if you just open your heart to understanding the scriptures, be meek, be childlike, like the scripture instructs us to do. Ask questions and learn things. You'll, you'll learn and you'll become your God will increase your understanding. Okay, so it's more so the connection I have. And, and the reason why I, I see a lot of people do what they do is because of the connection, the relationship they, they have and how far yeah. in their relationship. Okay, okay. So I'm a new Christian. Say so I'm a new qu Christian and everything. And um, I know that I now got to pray fast, go to church all the time now. And this is a big change in my life considering I've never done these things before as a new Christian. Mm -hmm. So how do I find the rhythm in this new life so I can you know, really live this new life as a as a born again believer. Yeah, yeah. I would say of course in all things you need to acknowledge God. So ask God for the wisdom, ask God for the grace. Mm. You know, where you fall short, ask for mercy. But there's also practicality to it. So in anything that you do, if it's a new thing, you're not gonna be good at it all the time at first. But you have to try. When you're intentional about something, you wanna become a better ex. Like if I wanna become a better singer. If I want to become a better speaker, I may not be good at it when I begin, but the more that I practice, the more that I apply myself, the more that I recalibrate myself when I make mistakes, I'll get better. It's the same thing with fasting. Look, I'll let y'all know now. Before I gave my life to Christ, I gave my life to Christ when I was uh, in college. Um, and I was speaking to an evangelist at the time. And I told him, I said, there's two things I don't play about. I don't play about my sleep, and I don't play about my food. And he was like, man, this walk with God, two things that you're gonna have to give up is your sleep and your food. And I was like, man, why did I even say that? But you know, it's one of those things where you understand, I'm not perfect. There are moments in times where I should be fasting where I don't, but we just finished the 80 day fast. I will tell you now, five, six years ago, I did not think that I could fast for 80 days. You know, where of course we break in the evening after we pray, but I did not think that I could go a whole day without eating a meal or drinking water or, or drinking, you know, Gatorade or whatever. But I've come a long way since then. And it's to understand when you're intentional about something, when you really truly want to do something new, you'll apply yourself. So, you know, don't kick yourself or beat yourself up if it's, you know, you're one day in, two weeks in, and you're not able to keep up with people who've been doing it for some years now. Give it some time. You'll see that, you know, you make progress.